What's up, Utes, youngins? It's your uncle, aka your biological father, aka your life coach, aka teaching you how to live. So we are in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Um, we're about to go hit up this thing uh, that you know, a lot of people do when they come to town, and I think a lot of locals do, and a lot of expats do, and that's rent out one of these little boat cruises for the sunset. They're um, varying prices, and the boats are varying qualities. Uh, we checked this one out online. It's, it sounds like it's supposed to be pretty decent. So we're going to go check it out. I think it's eight bucks a person. And I'm here with uh, Mr. Paul. Hello. Mr. Paul, who just recently we found an apartment with, and uh, he selected one. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I'm right. moving there in probably a couple of weeks. And we got Miss Mish. What's up? Tell, Excited for the sunset. Tell him how to live, Mish. Peace and love. Yo, what's up, childrens? So we are in our lobby. We're waiting for the tuk-tuk that's gonna take us to this boat thing. Um, none of us have ever done the boat thing before, so I don't know, it'll be good. Um, I'm super blazed, so that's not a problem. And there's a good breeze right now coming off of the river. Uh, the front of my building, you, can, you guys can see the river is like right there. So it's just like really nice breeze that just pumps through here. So we're gonna be, usually they dock the boats all along the sides of this, this river right here. You can't really see it right now, but Lewis, we're, we got that big fence with the cars in front of it, but there's usually like docking and like dirt where the boats kind of like pull up and they're all like different companies. Some of them are well lit, some of them are not. Some of them look like, like floating disco balls, you know? And then other ones are just like plain traditional looking boats. Um, so I don't know what the fuck we're getting today and what we're gonna get into. So this is totally new for me. You're coming along and you're gonna see it as we see it. So we got the Tuk Tuk. Uh, he's on the other side. Um, I thought, we thought it was some other girl's Tuk Tuk, but it's ours. All right, I got it. All right, so we're gonna go and see what, uh, what this whole little thing looks like. All right, so this is three Guys. motherfuckers in a Tuk Tuk. Yeah, but this is the Tuk Tuk Maxima, so it's a little bit bigger and it costs a little bit more. Yeah, it costs a little bit more, but they're nicer. Sorry, guys. Um, no, basically, they, they have two different types. They have like the larger Tuk Tuks, but sometimes they also have, um, what do you call it, the onion. Look, look. Yeah. Gorgeous view coming up on the right. Yeah, we're looking at the riverside. Wow. But this is the nicer side of the riverside, guys. This is like, so far, it's away, like away from like the majority of the tourists. More up by Wapanam. We're actually a little bit past Wapanam right now. Uh, I have no idea where we're going. Fuck, so this is like uh, a first for us. We're passing the bridge, though. Or maybe not. Or maybe it's like right before the bridge. I don't know. But uh, yeah, look, you could fit three people in a tuk-tuk, and look, what are we paying for this? Five, five thousand. So like a dollar twenty-five for three people. How can you beat the transportation in Phnom Penh? It's amazing. The tuk-tuk thing is so much better than the boat or bike taxi thing. You can save a lot of money. So that guy was a fucking clown. He had no idea where he was going. And this was grab. Usually grabs are the better that ones. That ride was going to be 10 minutes. He drove the wrong way for like 10 minutes. He almost got into like an accident. He was like just it, fucking guy's a clown. But this is what you get when you pay $1.25 for three people. 
Anyway, I don't know, but it looks like you can turn here. And, it, and uh, maybe the boat fucking thing is over here. <laughs> maybe we're not even gonna find the boat thing. <laughs> I don't fucking even know. We gotta go in the hotel, <laughs> I think. It's, it says the Himwari. Uh, the map's situation here is not always great. Um, but what's a little weird was normally the grab guys, they know the city very well. This guy, man, he didn't know where the fuck he was going. But like I said, you know, when you're balling on a budget, these kind of things happen. Uh, this hotel is crazy nice though, isn't it? Bro, what do you think of this hotel? It's pretty nice, I'd say here. Yeah, it's something else, man. Like, it's, uh, it's a lot nicer than uh, where I'm staying, <laughs> that's for fucking sure. Um, as far as uh, whether or not we're gonna end up on this boat, that's kind of uh, a mystery for me right now. I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Dude, it's just 10 minutes. He's like 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm giving him like fucking one star. The guy's a fucking clown. Um, not that it matters really. Fuck him. I mean, he's making a dollar an hour. Uh, you know, fucking. Nah, he's making more than a dollar an hour. That's why they do it, actually. He's making a dollar a ride normally. Remember this time in short, how I got lost? Mm hmm. That's for, was that the second? The first? I had a guy turn a half hour ride into an hour before. Okay, tell He had a half hour ride into an hour? That's only happened those two times. Yeah, no, most of the time the guys know it really well. That was actually really unusual. Um, most of the time the, the guys who do, who do the tuk tuks are pretty, pretty good. Yo, we found it. It's inside this, this crazy hotel. Look at this. It's called the Himawari. The Himawari. Look at this place. I can't believe we even made it over here because that fucking driver. I thought we were gonna get smacked by that fucking truck. You saw him? Yeah. He wasn't even he wasn't even paying attention. He just put it into fucking gear, and all of a sudden some guy cut like millimeters in front of us, and uh, Big Paul saw it out the corner of his eye. He was like, "What?" All right. So let's see if we can find this now. Oh, this is pleasant. The Himwari, damn. I just felt like it should have been in his field of view at that point, like much earlier than it was. And I was noticing that as we drove, he seemed to have it be a little bit tunnel vision. There were a lot of times he had to brake super hard. <laughs> he the was like, who were on top of their shit, they anticipate this stuff. They, the brakes are easy. Yeah. yeah, he was like slamming on the brakes. All right, so this is the pathway that goes to Diamond Island. I know that. Because we used to stay kind of at the bridge, and that's right next to Diamond Island. Uh, and then I guess he said turn left, so I think it's this way. Yeah, I've walked down this way a lot. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna try to see if we can get on this boat. I don't even know if it's gonna happen. But this is the nicest time of day to be over here though. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice place to go stroll. You can see local life, people doing their thing, chilling along the river. And said, I think. Uh, Mish might have just said we found it, I think, bro. Like, this is this probably, probably this structure up here maybe, right? I don't know. Is it, we pay here, John. Okay, it's one Remember? of these boats. Is this the right boat? Yeah. All right, you sure? Yeah. 100%? Yeah, you Hey, Sausage Eye Bong. You have raceway, sir? No, do you have space for three? We have space in, in, not in front with pool, we've got like in the middle or behind something like that. Okay. If you want. Uh, yeah, can we still see water? Is yeah, 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 okay. Got, like, if you want to take a photo of the sunset, you can walk in front. Okay. Yeah, oh. we'll take a in front of the other side. Yeah, it's just place to sit, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> it really is the best, man. <laughs> Oh, we had a good one in Lao. Yeah. And oh man, look at this. Okay. Let's see. Am I going swimming today? Uh, no, nah, it's no, nah, it's okay. Just yeah, it's it's reasonably strong. All right. So it looks like this is where the crew be be having the snacks. You doing okay over there? Okay, look, here's a dog. Hello. What's your name? Aw, you're cute. Okay. I'm assuming we get on right here. All right. This is already kind of... I don't even know what we're doing over here. Are we getting on the boat? Is this the boat? Look. No, there's two more. This is the boat? No, there's two more. There's two more. It's a chain of boats. You got to go boat to boat? gotta be right ah okay yo look look it's on this side bro hello bong hello. we have three people yes you have okay no he said it's okay we can yes. sit in middle i don't care we only have inside. Okay. that's fine where is the inside 
Okay, I'll Hello, follow you. Welcome on board. Hey, what's up, bro? All good? Sure. All right, look at this. Oh, there's a whole big tour group in town. That's crazy. Hey, what's up, Hey, Bon. Yes, please. Oh, okay, that's cool, Bon. Thank you. Uh, do, can we pay ABA? Okay. This is the spot. So far, I don't know what to make of it. We've got a little seat with a window. Um, because this tuk tuk guy made us late, we were like the last people to get on the fucking boat. Um, it's hot as fuck. I wanted to be early. It really sucks. I wanted to be early. Yeah, it's, it's still all good. Yeah, it's expensive as fuck though. Like for. Uh, it's like seven bucks for like a fucking certain meal and then they try to charge you eight for the boat. So it's actually not that cheap, really. It's, it's I think, better off just negotiating, maybe getting one of the cheaper boats, but this one is really good reviews, so let's see what, if it lives up to it, you know? Let's see if it's worth it. So I don't know why, but we got upgraded to the front. Somebody said they didn't like the loud music, which will probably get me copyrighted, but I don't give a shit. Look at this, this is all right. Uh, this is all, all, all gravy, this isn't so bad. Oh. Starting to get out here, Mr. Paul, living the life in Campuchia. You know, teacher in the Englishes to the youth. Me taking the photos of me doing the blogging. You know how we do it. Is this eight bucks well spent? Yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, there was one European dude on there, so that's interesting. I wonder if he's like the owner or the guy who's uh, they brought in to kind of bring in the foreigners. But, um, I think uh, eight bucks, eight bucks isn't bad. Nah, this is okay. You uh, buy a little snack or something and chill out. It's, it seems all right. My homeboy, uh, who's lived out here for a long time, he gets the ones for like five bucks, where he just goes up to the river and talks to the guy with the little boat, basically. And, uh, but this one's a little bit more like, I think it's supposed to be like meant for sunset rather than just going out on night with the fucking lights and music. You know? Here's a question. If something were to happen, where are the life preservers? Oh, there's probably none. Probably none. Yeah, yeah, there's probably none. What are the procedures for that? Hold on to something that floats. Get a piece of wood. Piece of wood. Yeah, I'm a good swimmer. Yeah. Although the Mekong is, is right, opens up right there and the Mekong is quite strong. I think the Basic is probably pretty strong at this point too. Um, you know it's funny. I can swim, but I'm a shitty swimmer. I sink. I'm sure you might sink too. Oh, I do, but I but I can. I have good cardio. I can go for pretty long. I just don't float well. No. I mean, if I try, there's like an exercise in swimming class. You float on your back. There's some people like, don't. I always sunk under. I couldn't. Some sunk. some people on the boat who don't look like they would survive. Like, it doesn't look like, they, I mean, you got some older people, people look out of shape, like, if this thing goes down and, and the river dolphins don't save them, they're fucking done. There's probably a current in this river, though, too. Oh, yeah, we, no, there's a strong one, bro, you know? Yeah. Hey, guys, so, so far the boat is pretty awesome. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than I thought it was going to be, like, eight bucks for the boat, and then, you know, if you want to get a snack or something, it's also eight bucks not that cheap um i've seen a lot of other boats but i'm sure that they have like less services than this probably and this boat got very good reviews so let's see how it is i'm almost wondering if the european dude is the dude who's cooking and that's why it's a little bit more of an upmarket crib the crowd is europeans so that's what's making me think it's possible for sure. Um, I like it. This is all good vibes, man. Fucking, it's always nice to be out on the water, especially in Southeast Asia, because it's so fucking hot and dusty, and you can get out on the river and breathe some cool air, you know? Yeah, guys, you can see where uh, the, Basak, the, the Basak River is like brown, and the Mekong is like a bright blue. And then we're going right through the part where it changes right now. So you can kind of see how it's like brownish this way, and more blue this way you know there are uh, two rivers kind of flowing right into each other and over there on the coast that's Diamond Island so that's that new uh, luxury development they built there's a lot of like 
fake European buildings and a few high rises, and then uh, a Aeon Mall, and then you know beyond that, if you keep going further south, is Russian Market and whatnot. Yeah, that's the ferry. So that's a peninsula over there, guys. And uh, this ferry goes between like near to Diamond Island and to the peninsula and back and forth, right? And it was piece, some, a lot of people, even one of my boys lives out there on that peninsula over there. If you guys watch our shorts, that's the one we show you out our window very often. Um, it's like uh, kind of like behind Michelle right now. And the ferry kind of goes around where we are here and wraps to there. And now we're starting to pass uh, that little peninsula that you see out at our window. That's what's behind all these people. And now uh, we're going to the, the other side of the Mekong, which is very undeveloped. So it should be very interesting. I've, I've never actually gone out on the Mekong like this in Phnom Penh. What do you think? How much is it for a single beer? Fuck, I don't know. We gotta ask. That's what I was thinking. Okay. So Paul, Paul needs a beer. Something cold would be good. All right, guys, so this is the other side of the Mekong over here. And uh, you can see everybody getting off the ferry. And you can see the difference in development from this side to the side that uh, you know Phnom Penh City is on. I mean, these are more or less slums. They're like right along the river. Like This is basically just slums right here. You see this? Like it's all just shacks and garbage. I have a question. Down. Yeah, yeah go on. These cars over here, do the owners, owners park them? Or do they have like that lady do it? We did it once, but we went from the peninsula, which is behind Mish, that, that peninsula that juts out. We went from there to by Diamond Island. So I don't know if it's exactly the same. I think the owners do it, they just tell you where to park. But I'm not totally sure. But yeah, look at this guy's like. Yeah, because you have to hire a lot of people to do that all at once to get I'll tell you something, man. It really, the inequality when you look at Southeast Asia is crazy. And it's just not just Cambodia, it's not unique to here. We were just in Manila, and that was shocking. But I mean, you know, it reminded me of something I imagine I would see in Calcutta, not in Southeast Asia. But you know, this is the reality, guys. You know, the travel bloggers will only show you one side of it. You know, and uh, you, know, you got to remember that for every country, all well, the positive things, there's also challenges. So don't come out with rosy-eyed glasses, and you know, you can have a great life in these places. But don't be naive. You know, like it's better to try to not. You know, dress things up to be something they're not. And I find on the internet that's something that's very common. pleasant way for us to wrap up Cambodia guys because we're gonna be headed over to Vietnam soon again you know, after so many years of being in Vietnam I kind of wanted to get away from it but I'm having a hard time saying no to a free company and a free visa so my partner wants to move our relationship closer so he's opening a company for us and we're gonna have residency over there for a couple of years so I guess I don't know if we're gonna stay there the whole time but that's kind of tentatively the plan so this was kind of a nice way to wind down for Phnom Penh one of my favorite cities, been coming here for 10 years, really watched it change over the years. It's gotten so much nicer. Uh, definitely uh, don't discount Cambodia. So now we're going out of the Mekong again. It looks like we're gonna go back towards the Basak River. That's the brown one. So one of them is blue, the Mekong is blue, the Basak is uh, brown. 
and this is like the point where they converge on each other and uh, that's the peninsula they're developing and that's going to be all high rises at some point behind us and I, I think they're going to drop us off back at that like swanky hotel over in the riverside uh, but I, I gotta say man I would recommend it it was a nice cruise it was good uh, it's just nice to get out on the river anytime really hey guys so the uh, river boat is successful really nice definitely come check it out you will probably end up spending some money but to be honest I think it was worth it the view is awesome and um, yeah enjoy I would uh, highly recommend it Are you thinking of living, investing, buying property, buying land, working, or spending any significant time in Cambodia? Cambodia is an amazing country that offers a wide range of different opportunities for someone who has an open mind. If you're thinking about coming to Cambodia for the first time, we offer a consulting service for people who are looking to have everything done for them before they arrive. They want their housing contacts, their employment, their consultants, whatever they want to find in the country, they want it set up. That's what we do for you. We make it easy so that you don't have to worry about scams, problems, or other pitfalls that new expats face in this amazing country.